Okay, so let us move on. Now, I want to discuss how to find distribution of a function of random variable. So, often what happens? You have some outcome. Let us say your outcome of the experiment, I am going to define it by a random variable x. But most of the time, it is not necessary that you will be just interested in x, but some function of this x. Okay, so maybe like uh, uh, if you have a outcome which can take values both positive and negative. Okay, that is so a random variable x is such that it can take positive and negative values, but you are not interested in the sign of the outcome. Okay, so you may want to define a new random variable y, which is simply the absolute value of x. That's what matters to the, the absolute value. The 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 call the, the magnitude not the sign so then what is happened is you have basically interested in a function of this random variable right or alternatively let's say you have a uh, outcome you don't want to just look at the outcome but you want you are interested in the square the value of the outcomes now how to find the distribution of such a random variables okay so let's start with a single random functions on single random variable then we will move to how to find distribution of the set of random variables. Suppose let us say you have random variable x, but I am into what I am interested in some function of this random variable x and let us call that function to be g. Okay. Now, what I want is I will tell you what is the distribution of x. Now, I want you to give me the distribution of y. How we are going to do that? If I am simply interested in the expected value of y, what I am going to do? What will be expected value of y? G of So, here if you just tell me the PDF, let us assume it is a continuous random variable and if you give me a g function, then I will just find it. Now, I am asking you more than this, okay, you find you give me, you can find the expectation like this, but I do not want you to just give me the expectation. I am asking you to give me the actual distribution of y itself. So, how we are going to do that? So, one thing to do is simply, okay, you want to find distribution of y is right. So, to do that we start with our uh, CDF. So, I am for some some c let us say some in r I will start with what is that probability that is equals to c. This is going to be simply probability of g of x less than r equals to c right. And suppose let us say you, you can this function this function g is invertible then you are going to find g is equals to g inverse of c. So, since c is a constant here, you know g function and suppose if you can invert it, you will end up with another constant here and uh, if you already know the CDF of this, you can find the CDF for this function. Okay? And then what you can do is now this is nothing but f of g this. Now, to find CDF of uh, y, what you need to do? Sorry, uh, this is going to be so this is going to be f of y at c. So, in general, what we are going to do? We have basically translated this condition, which this I can basically write as something like I have translated this into x belongs to some set A, right. So, this x being less than or equals to g inverse of C is saying that x belongs to some A, right, where A is now defined in terms of 
this constant c and my function g. So, so fine, so far we had cdf of y, now how you are going to find pdf? Differentiate with respect to what? C, right? So, suppose time being assumed that this guy is continuous and differentiable. Then you can differentiate with respect to C and you will going to get right away the PDF of Y, what you really wanted. Now, so this is for the case when you have your Y to be, sorry, X to be continuous random variable. But what have, what if, if your X is a discrete random variable? So, in that case, you want to basically interested in first the PMF of your random variable y and for discrete, you are going to say, okay, P of y, if my x is already so this is nothing but P of y equals to y, but now this is probability that g of x equals to y and uh, this is going to be set of all x such that g of x equals to y of probability of x and now Okay. See, like when I am applying probability, right, we have to be also careful. I am computing this probability with respect to a random variable x or y, or I am computing this probability jointly. Okay. So, in this case, when I write it here, I am computing probability that y is less than c, right. So, here the probability is with respect to distribution of y. Okay, and here now I have replaced y by g of x. Now here probability with respect to distribution of x. So often to be more precise, we can subscript these values like this. And here it is x and all, but when it is obvious, we will just drop it. Okay. So now let us come back here. Probability of y that it takes value small y is nothing but this, right? Like uh, and then I have just replaced y by g of x that is the definition of y. Now what I am interested is this is nothing but here set of all x such that g of x goes to y. Okay, It is not necessary that one point goes to when you apply g function on that one point it goes to one point right that there could be multiple points that can go to y. So for example, let us say So let us say this is your omega space and uh, this is your random variable x, y. So what is x doing is for each value of omega that lies in this big omega, it assigns some value on the real line. That is the meaning of x, right? x is basically giving values to each point in this. Now further what we are doing is we are further applying g on this to get y and that is further give me some for the same omega the new value y of omega. So just to be clear what we mean by this is y of omega is equals to g of x omega for all right. So now when I apply this g function, let us say this is some y, let us say I am interested in some y here that is my small i. When I apply this g function, it may happen that many function can fall to the same y. Right? So that is why I have to look for all x that takes the value y and then add all of their probability. That will give me probability of y at 
the value of that gives me probability that y takes value small y. Understand this? Okay, fine. So this is a process. If I just give you x with a certain PDF or just CDF or its PMF, if you want to ask find the P PMF or PDF of y, this is the general step. You have to just basically translate that value in terms of x itself for some known set and write it in this form. Okay, now where is this is this useful? Of course, this is useful whenever you want to find the PDF of a function of a random variable, but most often it comes to use when you want to simulate a random variable or samples according to a given distribution. Okay. So, many of the time you want to do a priori some analysis, right? You, you, you feel that your system has this kind of CDF, uh, but you cannot always work on your system. For example, your system could be a very costly aircraft carrier or like a, a big aircraft, I mean, fighter aircraft or something. So, you cannot like directly work on this, right? You have to basically simulate some of the things in your room. So, to and suppose say like some critical component or whatever component if you feel that it is going to behave in this form, then in the in the in, in your laboratory or in your computer you want to generate samples according to that distributions, right? So, how you are going to generate that distributions? So, here this function of random variables come handy. Suppose let us say you have a system which produces outcomes according to some distribution f. Now, I want to generate samples according that is that obeys this CDF or come up with a random variable or characterize a random variable that has this CDF. So, suppose if I can set up an experiment that gives outcomes which has a CDF as per your requirement that means, I am basically simulating whatever the real thing that you wanted to uh, characterize through this F right. So, now how to generate a random variable which has this f. So, often we will be given x and we will say this is the CDF of it. Now, I am asking you a reverse question. Given the CDF, generate me a random variable whose outcomes will have this CDF. How you are going to do that? So, one simple thing to do is we, we know uniform random variables, right. So, the claim is that using uniform random variable and the description of this function f, you can generate a random variable whose CDF is exactly this, okay. So, suppose let us say u is uniformly distributed. in the interval 0 1. My claim is that if I am going to construct a random variable like this, this random variable x will have the CDF f. Okay? So, let us first see why that is true and then let us try to make it bit more precise. F has been given to you. When I say F is given to you, that is a CDF and I expect it to satisfy all the three properties of a CDF. What are those? Monotonicity, the limits being 0 and 1 at the two extremes and then right continuity properties. So, let us say this already has those things. Now, uh, my, co my task is to generate a random variable that has the CDF. So, now if I define this, my claim is if 
this random variable has exactly that CDF. Why is that? Suppose let us say and here F inverse does the job of G and U is uniform random variable which I already know how, how it behaves and how to let us say generate it. But now my goal is from that generate a random variable whose CDF is going to be the given F. Now let us say I am going to do this. What is this? Probability that F inverse of u is less than or equal to this. And now if you simplify this, this is going to be u is less than or equal to F of c. Right? So notice that f is a CDF, right? What is the range of f? f? It is going to take value only between 0 to 1, right? Now I am asking the question after simplifying this, this uniform random variable taking value less than or equals to f of c which is between 0 and 1. What is this value? It is simply going to be f of c. So you see that the the CDF of this random variable is exactly what you wanted. It, it is the CDF of, it is exactly the F function. Now, the question is to do this, I should be able to invert my function F, right? Whatever my function F that is given to me. So, is it possible like if you take a CDF which has all these three, three properties, I should be always able to invert it. Yes, why? That is enough. So, let us uh, look a simple, let us take an arbitrary CDF. Let us say it has uh, the shape. And let us say it jumps here and then something goes like this. So, there is a jump for us here and let us say this is the right continuous function at this point x and this is now it is clear that how the invert look invert point looks like. So, if I want to find inverse of my function f at this point let us say this is let us say y here. So, how you are going to find the value of x that gives you this value y on y axis. So, you just draw a line there and then come back here right. So, at this point let us say this is uh, let me call this y 1 and this one x 1. So, this x 1 is the inversion of this y 1, but how you are going to do at a point here let us call this y 2. So, what this any value in this where it is going to map? Is it possible to clearly define what is the inversion here? What is the inverse of a y2 here? It will not be in the domain of f. Right, but, uh, but to make this work, I have to assign some value to f inverse function right I need to define what is my f inverse function. So, one possible way to work on this what we have to do is we have to appropriately define f inverse u what f inverse u you can define is suppose let us call this as u in this case which is in this we can define it as min of x and f of x. So, you look at all the values of f of x which is going to be greater than this point and in that you take the smallest one. So, it is going to be this. So, this is monotonically increasing right. So, all the points above this you take, but from that so all this 
region will be covered in that take the smallest one and if you do this this is still well defined and uh, from that you can continue with this definition of f inverse function in this and you can see that like if you just define f inverse like this everything goes through okay fine so this is uh, you you see that right like where how this function of random variables comes to help at least if you want to simulate a one random variable which is complicated random variable if i can define a function appropriately g function then using a simple random variable in this case uniform random variable i should be able to generate a random variable which satisfies the more complex cdf characteristics okay fine okay fine so we will in the in the go look into the textbook there are so many examples about uh, how to uh, derive cdf of one function which is expressed as a function of another random variables okay so just like one example which you can work out is suppose let's say you have a random variable which is defined as y equals to tan of theta where theta is distributed uniformly from minus pi by 2 to pi by 2 you understand this theta is uniformly distributed random variable that takes value between minus pi by 2 to pi by 2 now you are applying tan function on that and you are defining the new random variable as y so how this function look like so let's say this is my pi by 2 and this is pi by 2 minus infinity to so it goes like maybe something like thing like this okay now what is the range of y minus infinity to plus infinity right whereas the range of theta is just minus pi by 2 pi by 2 now how to find the cdf of y here so just like using this method you can work out and you will see that f of y of c is equals to One by pi, one plus c square for c between minus plus infinity. So this is one upon pi, one plus c square, and uh, this PDF is in the literature. It is called as Cauchy PDF. So this is function of one random variables right it is not necessary that most of the time you will be dealing with one random variable like as I said if you are interested in a weather you may be interested in temperature, humidity, density of whatever the clouds whatever so there are so many random bunch of random variables you have to deal with and then you may want to look at transformation of this random variables. So here it is a transformation of single random variable but you may be interested in transformation of a set of random variables so how to do that now when we have a set of random variables all are defined on the same probability space I could treat as them, them as vector suppose let us say I have m random values x1 x2 all the way up to xm I can treat them as a vector having m components ok so I am just going to represent that as a random vector now so a collection of random variables I have I am just going to take them as a vector and denote that as x here now what is the 
and x here is a random vector here. So, I am just going to use the same notation for a random vector and also sometimes even single random variable I am going to write it as x. So, you should be clear from, for, from the context that I am talking about x which is just like a single random variable or it is a random vector. Okay, now what is the distribution of this random vector? When we have a set of random variables, we had something called joint probability density function, right? We are going to take that joint probability density function as the distribution of this random vector, okay? So, the joint PDF. So, I have already told you that when I have a m random variables, they are completely characterized by this joint probability density functions, right? I am going to now take this itself as the probability density function of this vector and that makes sense, right? Like now in this case, I will simply write it as an x. Here x is this vector and this x is this vector. So, x is uh, this vector of random variable, this x is the values, the vector realizations they are taking, okay. Now, again, so again do not, again notice that I am simply writing it as x to denote this entire vector and it should be again clear from the context I am talking about single random variable or a multiple random variables. Now, on this multiple random variables or a random vector. Now, I may be interested in the same, okay. If I have PDF of this random, random vector to be x and I will be interested in another random vector which is a function of this random variable. Okay. Now, how to find how to find the distribution of this random variable y. So, we already discussed when this x is a random vector is just like a singular value like just has one component we already computed how to do this, but now this x is a vector how to do this, okay. So, for this I am just going to write a formula which is expressed in terms of the Jacobian matrix. We will not derive it, but uh, we will take it and you will make yourself familiar with that and you are going to do some exercise uh, how to use that. Now, this is like let us say y is continuous. So, notice that once we have here, I can also write x to be g inverse of y, where y is again a vector. For any y in the range of g, we have that f of y of y is equals to f of x x divided by it's going to be t of x the t of y computed at y. So when I wrote write this, this is the Jacobian matrix. And when I say this two vertical box verticalized this is indicates the determinants of this Jacobian matrix. Now, what is this Jacobian matrix?
it basically looks how each component varies each uh, dependent component independent component varies as a function of the independent component varies as a function of the dependent uh, component so let's say you have x1 here y is what dependent component right it is dependent on x x1 i'm going to write it as y1 x1 y1 all the way up to let's say xm2 delta y1 and then delta x2 delta y1 So if you are going to solve this, so you have to construct a matrix like this. And then, so this is going to be a square matrix. So we are also going to assume that this y is also of the same dimension of x, okay. So then you are going to find the determinant of this. So now here, this is you are going to compute it for a given y right i know but for that you have to first find x here is nothing but g inverse of y and then you are going to compute this matrix at y so it would be x1 there also last column what Is it fine now? Okay. So let us quickly look into this. We are not going to see how this will come, but let us just quickly to get a grasp. So let us say you want to, for example, as an example, let us say you are in a Cartesian, in a Euclidean sp space where the component, how you are going to denote a given component point through its coordinates, right. So like if you are in a two dimensional space, any point you are going to denote as x1, comma x2. Now let us say you want to shift to polar coordinates. So in polar coordinates, what are the components you need? R and theta. So R and theta can be expressed in terms of x1 and x2. So that is the map. So let us say you are already in the Euclidean space and now you want to basically go to polar coordinates. So that you can do through some function. And now if this Euclidean points have some distribution, you want to understand what is the distribution of the polar coordinates. Now, how you are going to do this, this method is going to help you, okay. So, let us take a simple case where my R1, R is equals to x1 square plus x2 square radius and my theta is equals to how it is going to be x2 by by x1. So here my x is going to be x1, x2 
and my y is r and theta okay and my function g is such that it is doing this kind of mapping it is taking r1 and r2 and giving you sorry x1 and x2 and it is giving you r radius and it is giving you theta so okay so now you have expressed independent random variables uh, so these are independent here so how the dependent variable depends on them so i could also write in a reverse form right so how can i re uh, represent x1 x2 in terms of r and theta r and okay so now in this case my this matrix is going to be simply two book two cross two matrix right because i have only two components in this so can you quickly compute this and tell me what is this jacobian matrix is going to look like so take y1 to be r and the yt to be theta cos theta minus r sin theta sin theta r cos I mean, just check. This is what the computation I have here. I'm just writing that. Ah? Huh? Going to be transpose of this matrix. Why is that? To do del x one by del r. This will be cos theta. X one. I'm just going to do r. This is simply going to be cos theta, and then this one I'm going to do with r. Okay, did I mess up this? Oh, sorry, I think I messed up this. Like uh, this should be. Yeah, but uh, let let me just uh, define this correctly. Determinant will be same, but whether I need to take transpose or not is the worry. Now it's fine. Okay. Now what is this function? So let's now try to let's plug in this. What is the determinant of this? It's going to be r. So now what is this quantity? So for a given y, what is this? We don't know it, right? Like I have not told you what is this f of x. Okay. For time being. So now let's assume. For to do do to do this, I need to know. f of x right the distribution of the independent random variables here suppose assume that x1 is gaussian sorry x1 is uh, gaussian with zero mean and let's say variance one okay and also assume the same x2 is also the same thing and assume they are independent x1 and x2 are independent then what is f of x x1 x let's say x1 x2 so what is this distribution if i am saying independent it is going to split right it's going to be x1 x1 f of 2 and x2 what is this distribution f of x1 of x1 gaussian we know its formula right and uh, for this also we know the formula now this quantity now what is x1 and x2 here if i tell you y y is now for me what r and theta right if i tell you that what is this x1 is going to be i have already written what is that now so finally what is the formula is going to look like for f of y for some pair r theta what is this f of x1 
r cos theta f of x2 r sin theta and what is the determinant r can you quickly plug in the gaussian distribution here and see what is that you are going to get r by 2 pi e to the power so it is going to be r square cos square theta plus r square plus sin square theta right that is simply going to be r square by 2 huh? excuse me <laughs> so it is fine. So if you notice this, we have already come across this distribution, where is, where was that and we gave a name for this. So if you look here last distribution in the continuous, yeah, so this is really distribution, right. But uh, there uh, you would have another term that we have written for more general case, but if you set sigma square equals to 1, this is what you are going to get. Okay. So, this is relay with parameter what? Sigma square equals to 1. So, that time when we discussed about this relay distribution, we said that this is going to be the envelope of a sum of random variables, right. So, if you now look into this, this is exactly what we mean by envelope that time. You just take the squared sum and look at the square root of that, this is what the envelope. So, this is how like the sum of the Gaussian squared and if you take the square root, we will recover the Rayleigh distribution. So, you will see again more things can be computed depending on what is your applications. So let us stop here.